Hello, this is Jermaine, and today we are going to be studying the power of persistent prayer. God began this study for me in the early 70s when I discovered that our son David was into drugs. I cried out, God, teach me to pray. By this time, I was in a one-on-one -on -one father-daughter relationship with God, and I knew that the answers were in the Bible. One particular scripture that jumped off the page was James 5, 16b. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous person avails much. Well, I wanted to know how to pray prayers that would produce results. We did everything we knew to do in the natural, but nothing worked for us. David was polite and respectful in our presence, but he continued living in the land of addictions. And soon his addictions overcame him and consumed uh, his life's ambitions. In the meantime, I was searching the scriptures. The Bible was my textbook and the Holy Spirit was and continues to be my teacher. David's dad and I had a big problem, but I had learned that my father is bigger than any problem. Another scripture, 1 John 5, 14, 15, spoke to my heart, and, that I, and I knew that I was to pray God's word over our son, rather than allowing circumstances or my feelings to dictate my prayers, I began to pray for David according to scripture. Now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we have asked of him. Someone told me if I prayed for David more than once, that the second time was just unbelief. But the Holy Spirit continued to draw me back into the intercessory prayer room for David. In Luke 18, I read about the persistent widow and the unjust judge, which strangely enough relieves me to continue going back to the intercessory prayer room again and again. I was coming to a judge who is just, who is love. And I had learned that he's faithful to watch over his word to perform it. I had determined from the scriptures that I had been made the righteousness of God in Christ and that I could trust God to save and deliver David from all his addictions. I had come to the General Assembly, to Mount Zion, the Church of the Firstborn, who are registered in heaven, and to God, the Judge of all. He had a plan for David's destiny. The last year that he was in that strange land of addictions, I began to bind his mind and will to the blood of Jesus the grace of God, the mercy of God, the will of God, and the purpose of God. I loosed from his mind negative thoughts and bad feelings toward himself and others. Praying for a family member can be challenging. Sometimes it's difficult because of our emotional attachments. On one of my last sessions of prayer for him, I included this heartfelt cry, Father, I may not see him delivered in my lifetime, but I will see him in heaven. Today I can confidently rejoice. The years of persistent prayer has become a testimony to a God who hears and answers prayer. David is now Vice President of Word Ministries and he shares the unconditional love of God with others. Do not give up on praying for your children and check out our testimony in our book, Prayers That Avail Much for Your Family. God hears and answers prayer. To God be the glory.